Nintendo Wii U is an interesting console with a very strange history. It is considered by most to be a massive flop selling just over 13.5 million units between 2012 and 2017. Many people point to the lack of games at the system's launch and its overall lack of third party support as to why the system didn't sell nearly as well as the previous Wii or even now the Nintendo Switch. And with a relatively small library of games, collectors are starting to snatch them up and start to complete their sets. There are right around 150 North American releases for the system, and some of them are getting hard to come by for one reason or another. Well, I'm your host as always, KMAC Time, and today I want to go over 10 of the rarest and most valuable Wii U games you guys should be keeping an eye out for. First up on the list is a sports game, believe it or not. Now, typically, sports games get tossed in the bargain bin very quickly and are never worth very much. But this is not the case for NBA 2K13 on the Wii U. As it was a launch title for the system and it sold extremely poorly, making it harder to come by nowadays, and it's sought after by collectors who are trying to complete their collection. Most people who wanted to play the 2K games opted to buy it on the more popular systems like the PS3 or the Xbox 360 or just didn't have a Wii U because no one bought a Wii U in 2013 and by the time people anyone wanted a Wii U, this game was off of the shelves and had a low print run. So now many people are trying to find this, like I said, to complete the set and the price for it is going up. If you want a complete inbox copy, it goes for around $40 these days. Another game that came out pretty early in the Wii U's lifespan and went mostly under the radar is Game & Wario. It's a collection of mini games. It's actually a pretty fun little party game. It's just too bad that not many people got a chance to play it as it got a pretty small print run, especially for a first party Nintendo game. You'd think that they would print more of these or they would have along the lifespan, uh, especially because it's a, a Mario family game. It's a semi hard one to find. People are out there trying to get this game to complete their collection. On top of it being a good game, it's a kind of harder game to come by. So its price has not really dropped. If you want a complete copy, it'll still cost you around 40 to $50 for a complete copy. Another oddball sports game that is actually worth a good amount of money on the Wii U is Wii Sports Club. Now everyone remembers playing Wii Sports on the original Wii. And this game is basically a beefed up, better version of that, but on the Wii U, of course. And for some reason, this game has held its value and then some since it's been released. I suppose it makes sense because it's actually the best version of Wii Sports you can play and it's loads of fun, but I still can't find a complete copy for anything less than $45 to $50. So if you run across a cheap copy of it, make sure to scoop it up. Next up is a game called The Devil's Third, and this is a game that suffered from an incredibly low original print run. The game is a first person shooter that got somewhat mixed reviews. But due to scarcity of the game, it became kind of a must-have for Wii U collectors. And at one point, this was considered the rarest game on the system and was going for well over $100. Luckily for collectors, though, Nintendo saw this and made another small print run of the game after seeing the artificial demand for it. However, there still wasn't enough copies to go around. And even though the demand for the game went down a little bit, the price went down. Uh, still pretty pricey game. A complete copy will run you $50 to $60 these days. Next up is a game unlike others on this list that's actually a fantastic game that I would recommend you guys try and play, which of course is Bayonetta 2, and as I say it, it's one of the best games on the Wii U, and it's a game that collectors are out there looking for. Specifically, the first print of the game, as that version came with the two-disc variant that also included the very first Bayonetta game, so that was a pretty cool bonus they threw in there. Uh, it was a very low run, print run game when it first released, but Nintendo eventually did release another print of it, but they took away that bonus disc, the one that gave you the very first game. So the version that's worth the most, obviously, is the first print version where you guys can get the both games in one package. And you can tell by looking at the seal on the cover, it'll say Bayonetta 1 on the front. That's the difference. You guys know that is the more expensive version. That version of it is around, worth around $45, $50 still today. Our next game is a game that went completely under the radar when it was released. Funky Barn came out at a time where there was little to no hype around the Wii U, and it seemed like nobody actually owned one at the time. Like, I remember anyone having one. And basically, it's a budget title game that got next to no promotion for its release, so no one even knew this game existed. As you guys can imagine, it sold absolutely horribly, which led to developers not making another print run of it, which made it very hard to come by now. I'm glad that I actually found my copy in a bargain bin at a Toys R Us a long time ago for like eight bucks, but today it sells for over $45 to $50 for a complete copy of this game. 
Now, if you had told someone back in the mid-1990s that one day Mario and Sonic would have a game together, they probably would have laughed at you. But that, of course, has happened a few times to date, but Mario and Sonic at the 2016 Rio Olympics is a pretty sought-after game on the Wii U. The game itself is, of course, a collection of all these little Olympic games, and it's kind of not that great. You got your running, and your swimming, and your horse racing, and all the typical things you would see in one of these stupid Olympic games that come out every four years. They're kind of junk. But as you may have guessed, this game sold pretty poorly on the Wii U. Uh, not a whole lot of fans prefer this. Even though it was a Mario game, it wasn't printed in massive numbers. So with collectors snatching the game up for the collections these days, the prices are being dro driven upwards. A complete copy goes for like $70, $80 these days. And it's kind of becoming a, a, a piece that people want. It's kind of a cool piece of history. It's got Mario and Sonic both on it. And like I said, it's getting more and more collectible by the day. Our next game is a great example of a horrible game being worth a stupid amount of money because it's rare. Turbo Super Stunt Squad is a very hard to come by these days. It came out very early in the Wii U's lifespan, so of course not many people bought it. It's a based on a stupid DreamWorks movie. Not a lot of people wanted this. It's like a little kid's game. It's basically like a racing slash skateboarding game, but you play as a snail. I don't know, it's really dumb. Anyway, as you guys can imagine, sales were very, very low, and because of this, the game became incredibly hard to find, and which have, of course, made prices today skyrocket. I cannot believe what people are paying for this stupid game, but if you want a complete copy and you want to have a complete Wii U set of games, I guess you have to have this game, and people are paying over $100 for a complete copy of this piece of crap game. Very dumb. Another game that is in almost the exact same situation based on a DreamWorks movie, didn't sell well, came out at a weird time, is The Crude's Prehistoric Party. It's like I said, another game based on a movie. It's sold next to no copies. It's a piece of crap game. And it just blows my mind how much money people are spending on these awful, awful games. I mean, there's absolutely no reason why these children games are going for so much money other than people want to put them on a shelf. And it just goes to show how much Nintendo fans are willing to spend to put a game on a shelf that they're never going to play, they're just going to look at. And just, wow. Anyway, this game is selling for upwards of $80 to $90 these days for a complete copy. And finally, the most valuable and rare game all, as of now on the Wii U is Hello Kitty Cruisers of all games. And you guessed it, it's another horrible game. They got this very small print run, sold no copies, and is sought after by these crazy Nintendo collectors trying to complete their sets. There's absolutely no reason why this game shouldn't cost more than $5 in a Walmart bargain bin, but due to low availability and high demand, it is selling for insane amounts of money. This game actually was a port of a mobile game when it was released, if you guys can believe that, and it was released as a budget title for just $20 originally. And it's just, you know, you just believe this game is straight up awful. Anyway, however, recent copies of it have sold on eBay for as high as $180. But it looks like the average copy sells for about $120 to $135 these days. So if you guys happen to come across a copy of Hello Kitty Cruisers at a Goodwill or a garage sale, make sure to pick it up because it's incredibly sought after by collectors these days. But anyways, that's all I have for today, guys. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure to do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like this in your sub boxes daily. Also, be sure to check out some of my previous rare and valuable game lists. Links in the end slate and the description. I've done it on multiple systems from PS1 to PS4, Xbox, Xbox 360, all the Nintendo systems, NES, Super Nintendo, N64, all those systems, and Sega and Atari, all those stuff. It'll be like links that links in the end slate down below. Uh, let me know what your guys' favorite Wii U games are down in the comments. I would love to know. You guys are a big fan of Mario Maker, Wii U, Splatoon. What do you guys play on the Wii U if you guys do play it at all anymore with the Switch being out? But anyway, guys, that's all I have time for. Like I said, remember that's always came back time somewhere. Until then, guys, take it easy and peace out.